I've all noticed it. And we have a very special video. This is my first ever Hatton's locomotive. And just to show I'm not joking, there's the label. This is a Hatton's exclusive. So, uh, bit of a bugger to get my hands on, but I got one. It is, in fact, one of the, well, 042 tanks that D DJM did for Hatton's before they went bust. DJM, I mean, not Hatton's. Specifically, this is a 1400 in BR lined black early emblem, as you can read there. It's pretty usual, there ain't much to say on the back nor the top, but there is quite a lovely drawing of the first batch loco, which was a 48. Hmm. Oh yeah, the first batches of these were classed as 48, so. Plastered autofocus, I never will that tax thing. So, there's actually enough room on the lab to unbox it, so, yeah. Bit of a difference, I like the princess video. Okay, here we have the box and a pretty rubbish tripod. I say rubbish because it can't stand still. Blast it. There. Now it can. Good. Teething troubles. Always teething troubles. So, let's get the box off. Got a lid off. It's not too far different from Model Rail or my uh, current Model Rail Center ones. So, uh, I like that. Okay, first off, we got the spare sheet with... Well, you say spare sheet, I call it an exploded diagram. Holy smokes. Whew, no wonder they're more expensive than Hornby's ones. Cripes. Oh, this is for the 58. What? Where is the two different styles? I think I'll find out later. All right, the paperwork. Instruction sheet, controller, electronic track cleaners, don't use any, so I won't bother. Before use, this is second hand by the way, so I think I'm okay. I'll still give it a quick testing on the rolling road though, before even thinking of putting it on the layout. And this will be done off camera, so yeah. I don't know what I was getting glares. I forgot to turn the flash off. <laughs> Detail pairs not on 58XX. Oh, this must be for the auto train gear. So, okay. So to fit, da, 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 blah, blah, blah. Alternatively, remove the auto gear panel by gently flicking it off with a scalpel blade and replace it with the cover. So the cover. DC, DCC, and you can tell it is an old D DJM toy, loco, because of your very unique smoke box door bit. I love that. I do love that. DARPO, I believe, would do, have done that with the Manor class. No, Mogul, but I think they'll do it with the Manor too, so, yeah. And, well, speaker room in the bunker. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's get the loco out. That's from cover. And unlike the Colonel Model Rail Center O2 tanks, this thing actually is in the proper case. Sweet. And my oh my, that's a tight fit. Nothing in there, so. Okay, I'm trying to figure out what's with the bit of foam in there. Weird. Alright. I have no idea what's I have no idea what's with the foam here, so okay. Detail pack. Lovely. Let's see here. Oh we got the front coupler. If the focus plays fair. Front coupler. Uh I think that's a bunker piece. I'm not sure. So much detail pack in here. We got we got vacuum pipes, steam pipes. Well look like fireman's tools. I, I can't tell it's so much in here. Wow. Other covers for the auto train gear. 
Stay with me, you stupid autofocus. Free link couplers. Uh, hang on. For the coupler, these two bits. I do not see a screw. I'll check the locomotive. And adjust the camera so that autofocus doesn't get on my darn nerves. I swear, whenever one of my videos starts going good, the focus butts out on me. That is very annoying. Okay, before even taking the case off here, we can instantly tell this is a beautifully detailed locomotive. I mean, you can even see the inside Stevenson's motion. That's brilliant. Cab detail, beautiful. It's very remarkable. The pipe work alone, that is... The pipe work alone is very immaculate. Wow, I'm loving it. I haven't even ran it, and I'm loving it. Now, how do I open this? Oh. Okay, it's a bit light. It's lighter than I thought. It's, I'd say it's about the, maybe the same weight as the O2s. Okay, cab roof vent. Does not open. Bugger. Now, it's a damn shame, because you could see the inside of the detail a lot better. Okay, this looks good. Oh. Alright, that's one in the nose compared to the O2 tanks. This has strong buffers. Alright, as for the coupler, I'm just checking the underside now. Like I said, I bought this second hand. So, we imperfections like that. Yeah, we can expect that kind of rubbish. Couplers look very good. Wow. Nice, easy to access oiling points for the rear wheels. Uh, not rear wheels, driving wheels driving gears and I'm missing the screw for the coupler what the monkey's uncle what the heck it looks like taking this off camera for a minute hang on oh no oh no okay I just had a good look at it the screw thread for that is completely gone oh boy someone shred the thread out of there so oh. This will never run a front coupling. Not unless I re-tap the hole in that. It's not going to happen. But the pipe worked. Oh, man, that's beautiful. Alright. Easy now. I do not want to ruin any of the detail on this. And it's so brilliant. But I see they fall into the same category as Bachman and Hornby. When it comes to doing something on a western tank engine or any western locomotive at all, they keep screwing this up time and time again. These are painted copper, not black or green. It's what helps the western stick. Top of the chimney. These. Copper. What the heck? But I'm just nitpicking here, so if you have your own begrudgings on something like that, Say you agree, say you don't agree, it's fine. But I'm just kind of ticked off. I mean, I... it would have been great if it was painted copper. And no, I'm not, never going to get the paint out on this one. Never will. Purely because, one, be fiddly as all heck. Two, the copper paint I use would take multiple, multiple coats. And three, again, no. The way I'd get a good br polished copper look is if I use brass color stuff, so no. No. But I will chuck this on the rolling road and see how she does. Okay, so we have the locomotive on the rolling road. And well, since I usually like to do this showing the driver's side of the locomotive, annoyingly I had to flip it the other way because the Western Region, or Great Western Railway, depending on what you're modelling, the drivers were on the opposite side of the cab compared to anywhere else. And no, I'm not exaggerating on that. Most railways, the cab, the driver was on the left-hand side of the cab, Western on the right. So, that's different. And I'm just going to slowly power up. That's not too bad. Let's slowly get the half speed. Uh, 
Okay, that is half speed on the locomotive. And we're just seeing how effective a crawl this can do. Now, I think this has a three pole motor in it. I'm not too sure really. Could be a coreless. I don't know. It's quite cool though. I do like it. I really do. Now I'll give her a quick lap or two around the layout before taking it to the model club. On, I think a very suiting train would be an auto train. Two auto coaches should be more than enough for this locomotive. Sorry, I just dropped out. But if I want to be more cheeky, I could add a B set to the train as well. For those who do not know, a B set are two semi permanently coupled coaches. They were more commonly used on branch lines in the Western than auto trains. And even 14XXs used to haul them as well, so it would not be out of place. But we shall see. Okay, so here at the club, simple running session with the locomotive and with poetically some auto coaches. This is going to be an interesting run. You're going to tell me why? Because it looks cute. Her exact words. Yeah. Yeah, alright, 47's going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't need to. I'll show you. Okay, so let's be fair, how often do you see one with a proper colloid? Oh, you're seven. Yeah. Well, even though it's just a push pull set all together, because it goes with the O2. Well, a few of those were push pull fitted.
the first sit on the week show. Probably. <laughs> Always when filming. Always when I'm gonna keep that in just for giggles. Uh here we have the Hattons slash DJM fourteen hundred XX. A brilliant model in my books. Brilliant model indeed. In my mind, it might even be better than a Hornby Terrier. But I'll leave that opinion to other modelers. Until next time, this is Up One Always saying, see ya.